So thank you so much for joining us today on our Rugby World Cup edition of Tunnel Talk, Alev. We're going to take some time to get to know you a little bit better and ask some questions about your teammates as well. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. No worries. So firstly, we're going to start off with some quick fire questions just to get to know you a little bit better. Birthplace. I was born in Tampa, Florida, but raised in Eagle River, Alaska. Your current location? I'm in New York City, Long Beach. Your middle name? Alev. The first club that you ever played for? Uh, Saracens. <laughs> the career highlight, your career highlight so far? I um, have to say uh, two Olympics, Tokyo and Rio. Definitely. And your biggest achievement outside of rugby? Biggest achievement outside of rugby is um, I was recently accepted into the Stanford Business School, um, their executive education program for um, their program called LEAD, which is a leadership basic, yeah, executive education program. <laughs> when do you start? Um, I actually start the 5th of October. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll have my first, we have orientation now. We started the 16th of September, um, but I'll have my first couple weeks while we're on tour, so. Wow, okay, you'll have a bit of a busy schedule, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned them there in our quick fires, but you joined Saracens at the beginning of this year. Um, yeah. Storming performances in the black and red. Thank gym. you. So, I had a, a fun time. <laughs> it looked fun on the pitch. Um, how beneficial has it been? Um, has the English league been for players like yourself and for many other American players who have kind of taken advantage and gone and played in the Premier 15s in the build up to this World Cup tournament? Yeah, it's extremely important to um, play with the world class players and, you know, the English Premier League is the biggest and the best um, and for Americans to go over and play there. It's it's so important that we have, again, the experience, um, you know, and the freedom to have many games back to back to iron out what we are working on. And um, I thought even just playing with the Saracens, like we sat down and had a, a session our, our backs coach and we talked about kicking and we talked about manipulating defenses and moving people and having the freedom to do that whenever you know and I think we get stuck in a structure sometimes especially in American rugby it's like very structured because we're coming from all these different crossover sports or you know and I'm speaking mostly from like a sevens and little bit of a 15s experience but from my experience um, and this is different for every American so I'm not speaking on behalf of everyone but you know it comes from a very structured perspective to then once we get that that structure then we have the freedom to to break the structure and play what we see and i feel like american rugby is just now catching the brink of that of that freedom whereas the english premier league it's like you know everyone sees very similar pictures and they're 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 playing kind of a free form what they you know breaking those systems you know a little bit to to have their own flair individual flares and so to be in that and to experience that next to world-class players you know um holly and marley and poppy you know and it's just it's wonderful to see that come together in a culmination of a of a championship which was wonderful to to, to be a part of and a blessing to experience <clears throat> yeah thank you for that insight that's really interesting and and like you said um within the american obviously with the collegiate system and the different sports that you may have played before entering to, in entering into the world of rugby you yourself um i read that you were you know playing top le level soccer and hockey and that type of thing so you obviously came from a multiple different sport background yeah absolutely so when i was younger i i lived in alaska as far as i was raised and they didn't have women's ice hockey so i i played a lot of men's ice hockey which you're allowed to check in in men's hockey and so putting a shoulder in someone was very normal for me and in that transition to rugby I just had to learn how to wrap and roll and of course a lot of the laws that you know you don't have in hockey you have in, in rugby um and soccer is very um you know the crossover with kicking different platforms with your foot and then different weighted passes and the vision you know you work in threes a lot in hockey you work in threes in soccer um in in particular I played center midfield which is a link position and very similar to center and um different you know fly half positions so yeah it's a nice it's a nice crossover but I wish I would have found rugby younger and um, I'm happy that I found it now but yeah I'm eight, eight nine years young in the sport so a lot to learn still and excited to 
continue that pursuit of of excellence. So, yeah. yeah. That's incredible. Um, you know, although you say you've, you've only been in the sport for, for nine or so years, you, this is your second World Cup coming up. You obviously played in the 27 tournament in Ireland um, yeah. and reached the semi-finals that year. So obviously this year, you know, it's all to play for. You have a tricky pool with Canada, Italy and Japan, the latter two being slightly lesser known, probably to yourselves. Um, how are you approaching those three pool games? I think it's really important that we focus on ourselves and the strengths we have and the X factors that we have and getting to know one another. That time in Atlanta and again against Scotland and, you know, uh, a humbling experience against England, but it, it showed us where, where we need to be and what we need to work on. And that's that experience, not having that often is really, um, is really beneficial. And that, that highlights, you know, it's not just the work ons, but in the highest level of rugby in the World Cup level, it's, you know, it's going to be any mistake is going to be capitalized on and it's you can't afford that at that at that level. And so it really is a, a good experience, a good learning lesson that we can take and analyze, correct and get ready for for this. So so the emphasis for me is as as a team, I think, is to really focus on us and know our strengths and then um, bring that and each game, focus on each game, one at a time, not looking forward to Canada, just looking really on Italy, first and foremost, and, and staying as present as possible. I think it's so important. And a little bit about the the history of the game, I guess. Um, the USA were obviously so integral to the growth of the game in the early days, um, winning the first ever World Cup back in 1991. And to what extent have you reflected on that as a squad going into this tournament? I think we have, you know, the 1991 team um, forefront of our vision is just as, as leaders and, you know, pioneers of the sport, you know, Kathy Flores, she um, has, has recently passed away and she's been such an integral part of this team um, and, the, and the foundation and the legacy that this team is hoping to build and, and wants to grow, you know, roots within USA Rugby to then come back to that um, championship uh, gold medal game. And, and, but yeah, it's, it's, everyone before us not just the 1991 team but everyone and even people who tried out that didn't make it are you know people that we play for and you know have left a legacy and have left a mark on our our hearts and reasons to to jump up in the morning and, and tackle um you know continuously when we don't want to but it's it's a motivation that goes beyond honestly my words that i can even give give you but it's a it's a big inspiration for us yeah um, okay, Brill, and we'll just go into some quick fire questions just to wrap us up. So, um, before I ask a few more questions about your teammates. Okay, coffee, yes or no? Uh, yes, I have actually um, a Chemex tattooed with a coffee plant um, on my arm. Some people think it's a boxing glove, it is not. <laughs> uh, and this is not a chicken, this is a raven from Alaska, but a lot of people think it's a chicken, although I do have chickens, so, okay. Coffee, yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, your favorite American food? Oh, favorite American food. Yeah, that's a hard one. Uh, hamburger. Your favorite place in America? Uh, Alaska. Are you a messy or a neat freak? Um, controlled chaos. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit both. On tour, I'm a neat freak. Um, outside of tour, um, I like to have the freedom to uh, know where things are, just not ex extremely neat freak. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice answer. Um, are you early on time or late? Um, I'd say uh, a previous version of a lev is usually two or three minutes late. Um, a future lev is working on timeliness, which is something I have to work on. And uh, yeah, being on time being early to then be on time <laughs> socks and sandals yes or no uh depends on the sandal um if you have like rainbow like where the you know where your toe goes in between the sandal no if it's like socks on a cold day after surfing yes <laughs> Situation specific. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> functional. I'm pretty functional versus what it looks like. <laughs> okay. um, the best meal that you cook? Um, I'm actually cooking this tonight, but it's a Turkish 
dish called burek, which is with phyllo dough and some spinach and feta cheese and onion. Um, it's layers of like milk and egg mixture to kind of create that like spanakopita um, kind of Turkish dish. Um, it's called burek. And then the second one is a is one. It's a bean dish called barbunia. Yeah. OK, um, your favorite film. Uh, Miracle on Ice um, and Finding Nemo. <clears throat> they're not exactly tied, but there's again scenario and situational based functional. Um, and the two words, how would your teammates describe you? Passionate and energetic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of teammates, we're now going to, to answering some questions about, about your teammates. Okay. Okay. So who is the teammate you put your life in the hands? Jojo. <laughs> Jojo is on the American team. Yes. Brilliant. The teammate. Sorry, sorry. Okay. The teammate you have the biggest laugh with. Laugh with. Hmm. I'd say uh, Charlie can make the team laugh well, and um, Nick James. Perfect. The teammate you go traveling with. Lottie. <laughs> She's also my roommate, so it just works well. <laughs> nice, lots of chat. Okay, and I've got a list here of your of five USA teammates, and you have to describe them in one word. Okay. This is good. This is thorough. I feel like we should do this with our team. <laughs> wow. Okay, um, Kate Zachary. I wanted to say stubborn, but she is stubborn, um, but she's like a hard-nosed Red Bull. Like. Yeah. Hope Rogers. Uh, the Grinch. <laughs> Will she be? Uh, or does she know you think of her like? Or that? Santa? Or Santa? <laughs> Some people call her. Yeah, her favorite movie is The Grinch. She'll quote it. She'll quote it, um, beginning to end. Christine Summer. Yeah, uh, selfless and hard worker. I'm giving you more. Sorry, <laughs> because they're tied. <laughs> and Rachel Johnson. An angel. An angel. Definitely want her in her in your corner because she is absolutely uh, stacked um, and has the biggest hits. But she, off the pitch, um, wouldn't even like kill a bee or her to fly. Um, I think she's getting spiders out of Charlie's room, who's freaking out and just like catching them and releasing them. It's like it's a whole other level of love I've never experienced. So she's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank, thank you so much for joining us today on on Tunnel Talk, Elev, and um, best of luck for the World Cup. Yeah, thank you. And this was wonderful. And I appreciate you as well. Take care.